Shalom. I'm um, just waking up from a, a very heart-wrenching but good dream. It ended well. Um, and so when I woke up, I sat up in my bed and I prayed to the Lord Most High. I said, Father, um, do you want me to share this dream publicly, like on social media? And he said, absolutely. So I got up out the bed uh, so that I wouldn't wake my wife and came in my office to record this. And I pray that it is a blessing to those um, who are in need of this word. Um, although I know there are many men, regardless of ethnicity, who are suffering in silence, countless messages and emails and posts about my book, Cry Like a Man, has confirmed that um, emotional incarceration is affecting men of all ethnicities. And although that is true, this dream was specifically about African-American men, black men. But this does not exclude you. If you find yourself in this story, please seek to find yourself healing so that you can live and become a comprehensive man. In this dream, um, as many of you know, I've been training in martial arts for over 24 years now. And, um, but interestingly, I, I do not consider myself a martial artist. Um, a martial artist to me is someone who commits his or her life to the discipline daily. I'm just a man with a martial heart. Um, my heart wars for those who are hurting and who are suffering in silence, those who are in need of healing from Yahushua or Jesus, so that I use, I use, I have used the arts as just a tool in one of my, uh, I can't tackle box for fishing, because I am a fisher of men, to help men to pull them out but it's not my only tool, so I'm not a martial artist. I am a man with a martial heart, a heart that wars regardless of feeling so that I can help those who are hurting. And it's not by chance that my name is Jason, which means healer, the Lord is salvation. So in this dream, I say that to say in this dream, it was a man, a black man, a very strong, well-respected in the community and I really wasn't too familiar with him. But he had some animosity towards me because of all that the Lord was doing through me, through martial arts, I guess, through the cave of Adullam, helping boys break free from uh, the trauma that has been holding them hostage and fathers and sons becoming one and families becoming whole. So word had gotten out that he was angry and wanted to fight me. And I'm like, yo, who is this guy? What is this? What? what? What is this about? So one day as I'm walking down the street with my friend Tafuri, um, I hear someone yelling out of this abandoned like house. It looked abandoned. I don't know if it was, but it wasn't in good condition. And it was this guy. And he had so much hate and dissension towards me. Like, man, what's up? We going, man, I can't stand you. You know, blah, blah, blah. Nigga, this, this, and that. And so I'm like, yo, he comes off the steps and like, it was like a field of like tall grass, man, maybe about four to five feet tall. He just combing it, going through it till he get to me. And I stop and look at him. And I'm like, yo, my man, I say, I don't want to fight you over your feelings. What's going on here? And it was clear that this man had like jealousy towards me. And I was just doing what the Lord called me to do. It was almost like the drug game, like I took some of his customers on his block, like I set up shop down the street and I didn't check in with him to see where his territory was. That's what it felt like. And I said, however, I said, I'm not gonna allow you to hurt me and just sit here and let you beat me down. That's not gonna happen. So we both put our hands up and he's frowned up you know, ready to go. And I'm looking, my heart just is grieving. I'm like, damn, I say, this is a beautiful man and I, I gotta fight this man. 
Then I say that out loud. I said, man, brother, this doesn't make sense. I said, you're a beautiful brother. And for what I'm hearing, you're doing great work in the community. And here it is, two men about the same goal. And we're about to fight and possibly one of us may die. And so he looks and I can see that hit him. And all of a sudden that hard look started getting softer. And then I'm thinking he's like testing his distance. He putting his hand out, I'm thinking he's getting ready for a round kick or whatever. So I got my hands up and I'm ready. Then he extends his hand one more time and he touches my hand. And typically I never let someone do that in a fight, but he touched my hand and then he embraces it like holding it. Then he starts crying. Then I draw this man to me, this big brother grabbed him and he just wept like bitterly just crying, heart-wrenching tears, just pouring out deep. And Tafuri just looking, and I'm just hugging him. What appeared to be jealousy, this man lacked affirmation. So I continued, I said, brother, you are amazing. Do not be, don't despise small beginnings for it is written, the Lord just want to see the work begin. You are loved no matter what has happened, where you are. And then as I'm even telling you this now, because a lot of times my dreams have spiritual meaning and I pray for discernment. And right now he came, the house he came out of represents his heart where he was. He was abandoned felt lonely and so many good black men are this way. It appears that we're hating each other, but at the end of the day, it's the way we feel about ourselves. I know this because I was the same way. Growing up in the 80s in Detroit was no joke. We had to practice looking hard. You couldn't walk the streets looking soft or you would get what we call get checked in with someone to walk up on you. If they want your Adidas top tens or Max Julian, whatever, they say, check it in. If you didn't check it in, you either get shot or if they crewed up, you get beat down. That was jealousy. They wanted what that man had. But it was deeper than that. Because even taking that, it never fulfilled what they didn't have. So they kept doing it. And then that person either got shot or they got incarcerated. My brothers, we have to get to a place but we have to talk about this stuff. Get out of us what's hurting so we truly can live. We proudly call ourselves kings. But we're living like we have no crowns. I've, I've never seen. It's like well, we, have no, we don't have enough crowns. It's like I've never seen a king have about. 50, 60 crowns. Like it's like we want so much. But the one that we have on is all that we need. If we begin to love what's in that mirror, just because we see someone else with a different crown with a different gem in it, doesn't mean ours isn't as valuable. So after me and his brother embraced, he looked at me, said he was sorry, and he was just hurting. I think about a video uh, of Isaiah Thomas and Magic Johnson. And after years of just their relationship being in a, in a bad state, they finally met and it was beautiful, they reconciled. Two black men, two of the greatest to ever do it. For years, over a decade, didn't even speak to each other. Black men were powerful. Yes, there's some major generational trauma due to slavery, no doubt. However, we're in a place in time right now that our fathers and forefathers dreamed they could have. A place where it is safe or safer to show 
your weaknesses, to show where you're hurting. They didn't go through all that they went through for us to suffer in silence, trying to be hard when we're hurting. It only hurts us. Like in martial arts, if, you know, I, I love judo. And so if, if you're tight when you're getting thrown, you're trying to be hard, like, I got you, argh, like, you know, just strong. I was just grappling with one of my beloved students and I was just trying to be his practice dummy. He was so hard, but I was so soft and allowing his energy to be wasted and it frustrated him. But it's shown him that strength at the wrong time will wear you out. So if you're getting thrown and you're still hard when you hit that ground, it will hurt three times as much as if you allowed it, the fall to happen and break it. That's what's happening to us, brothers. We're trying to be so hard and I understand it, I get it. You feel that everyone, if you, <laughs> I remember one time telling someone in my family, they asked how I was doing. I said, it's been a tough day today, but I'm okay, I worked. I had to put in 14 hours. She literally was just like, okay, so what's what's going on next? You know, like, I'm like you can't just gloss over that. I, I literally told you, I just, you asked how I was doing. I told you I just worked 14 hours. What should have been next was, wow, make sure you get some rest, Jay. I, you want something to eat? But society, when you're strong, they only wake up, man, it seems, when you're in your casket or you're breaking down. But brothers, we can't allow that any longer to dictate how we live. I have an amazing wife who loves me. And I'm telling you the truth. She'll say, Jason, I need you. I want you to take a trip by yourself or whatever. And because I grew up in a home, I didn't see a man present. And my father didn't love my mom. Like, like I, I, I love my wife. Man, I allow that to this day. I have to fight just to do things for myself because I don't want to leave my family. That's unhealthy. We have to shed that. So many of you right now who are doing great work in your communities and you feel that you're not being acknowledged for your work. Affirmation is very important, don't get me wrong. But you have to get to a place in your life where it doesn't matter who sees it. You find peace in it as long as it gets done. Many are amazed at what's happening in my life with the Cave of Adullam and the work that I'm doing with boys. Man, I've been doing that for years, man. And I didn't ask for no attention. Truthfully, I'd rather all the cameras be off and I could just go back and just help the boys and young men and fathers. But that's not what Yah wants. He wants me to let my light shine in such a way that men will see my good works and glorify him who is in heaven. But that only happened, my brothers, when I went and got the help that I need, like I wrote about. I suffered in silence. I, I, I struggled with being depressed because I couldn't accomplish my goals and I saw others doing what they would, could do. And so when I say that dream hit me hard, I understand that. But I found no peace. I stayed in the same place as long as my heart was hardened and I didn't allow myself to be transparent. Vulnerability is powerful. Do not fear that people would take advantage of it. That's a blessing, brothers, because now you know who is fake in your so-called circle. Break free from what I call emotional incarceration. Live from your heart and not your fears. Man, I, I tell you, man, what blesses my heart when I'm out if I'm in New York or man, if I was just in New York and a brother stops me in the streets, strong brother, come up to me, man, I just love the work you're doing. And we embrace each other. 
man, that made my day. Or when I'm in a shopping mall here, a brother come up to me with his family. Says, man, I need to hear what you're saying. It is time. Come out of these abandoned houses. Step off of that porch that's about to crumble. Cry out. And I can't leave this out. <clears throat> People said, man, what changed you? I shared also. I'm very transparent and cry like a man. So you can buy and use it, man. Find yourself in that story because I purposefully wrote it. I cried writing every chapter. What happened to me, man, I got tired of suffering in this abandoned house. I got tired of faking it. And I got tired more so of running from God's calling on my life. I couldn't escape him. And I said, yeah. I said, well, it's only one way for you to use me. You're going to have to break me. And he took me through fire. But because of that today, my brothers, I am free. I am free. I don't, I don't, I don't have to fake it anymore. I don't have to hide my tears, man. When you allow, and this is my personal testimony, I don't, man, because to me, the best way to share your faith, is, faith, the best way to share your faith is to have it, and I have it, and I, and I show you it. I don't have to preach it. But when I allowed Yahushua or Jesus to truly penetrate the deep areas of my heart. Not this mystery God. I ain't talking about that stuff that's been taught in Korea. I'm talking about the true and living God. Yahushua HaMashiach. Jesus the Messiah. Coming to my heart. For real. I'm living proof. Look at me. Look at my life. He transformed me. Then, once the foundation was laid, me and my wife been through years of counseling. It wasn't until I allowed that breaking to happen was he able to now build on a solid foundation. That's what worked for me. So my brothers, wherever you are, I've met lawyers, I mean millionaires, <laughs> even a billionaire. Didn't matter. They were hurting. And it was all stemmed from a lack of affirmation. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, all of you are fearfully and wonderfully made. All of you are powerful beyond your wildest imagination. All of you, whether you feel it or not, are loved by someone. All of you, no matter what you believe, people are pulling for you. There is someone out there. But more so important, I want you to look in the mirror and I want you to pull for yourself. I want you to learn to love yourself. Do not be dismayed at everything that appears to be good. Because when their cell phones are off, majority of them are hurting just like you. Find Brothers, you have to seek so that you can find. The problem with depression and ungodly sorrow, because it is written that godly sorrow will lead to repentance, and I can testify to that. The problem with depression, brothers, and 
self-condemnation. It tends to dig a pit for us. And we tend to look at what we're not doing versus what we are doing. So whenever you feel depressed, take a moment to write down why. Don't just sit there and be sad. When I'm sad, I wake up sad, I write down why. If I can't find the why, I'm going to my therapist. But when I find the why, I say, oh, wait a minute. I wasn't respectful to my wife today. Or I didn't spend time with my son this entire week. That's a good reason to be sad or even depressed. And I go do something about it. Check it off so that I'm no longer depressed. That's the power of ruling our emotions. Being emotionally stable. So I pray that this blesses whomever uh, needs it um, and that you have a, a better day than you would have had if you hadn't seen this. Um, again, uh, thank you for all of you for your prayers. Um, just because I'm at a certain place in my own uh, walk doesn't mean I don't need your support and love as well. And trust me, Every time you say something that's encouraging, it lifts my soul. So thank you. I pray that you would do the same for other men in your life that are hurting. My sisters, if you're watching this, please today, go affirm your brother. They're hurting and they need you. And I know you're so tired of, and this is to my black women, I know you're so tired of you know, always having to be there to support. But we've, we've, been, we've been addressing it the wrong way. The only way we're gonna find healing is black men. We gotta go introspective. We got to go inward. And that's the hardest fight for every man, regardless of race. We'll run through a burning building to save our family before we go into a, a counselor's office to talk about what's burning inside of us. It's because we've been conditioned not to cry, been conditioned not to feel, we've been conditioned not to be human. We can never, ever be defined by masculine attributes. That's just half of who we are. That's why we're suffering because we know we are to feel, we, we know we feel other things, but if we're told we're only bold, strong, aggressive, and powerful, Wait a minute, I, I love my son. I want to nurture my daughter. I'm a nurturer. I'm compassionate. I want to be romantic. I want to hold my wife's hand. I want to help this homeless person. What do you, what do you, I, I'm not just this. But it's time now. Misconstrued masculinity is a misunderstanding of what a man is, is has destroyed so many men putting their lives in a box. Like my friend Lewis Howes calls it, he calls it the mask of masculinity. You're hiding behind attributes that limit you. Take it off. Crying releases stress hormones. But when I say cry like a man, it's much deeper than just crying tears, brothers. It's about releasing the trauma and emotional pain held in, held in your heart and your mind for years. So my sisters, thank you. And I know you hurt every time. I was on my girl Karen Hunter's show and we were talking about this standard that's placed like everyone has to look like a Kardashian. And I told her on her show, I'm like, look, Really, that's been flipped because the Kardashian came from way, the way you look. And this is, my brothers, could you imagine if, like, and I'm going to go here. Could you imagine if our sisters only wanted men who look like Kardashians? I'm not talking about Kim specifically, but you know the look I'm talking about. Men who were that, of that complexion, 
my physique's just off the chain and you know you know what I'm talking about and my boys was honest they said man I would be depressed one of my good friends said his daughter was sad because of that because she felt like man well who am I so my sisters on behalf of so many of us I apologize and I'm gonna tell you the truth we love you we just don't love ourselves So, again, I, I hope this isn't too long, but um, I pray that you heard the heart of the Lord and nothing that came from me. And I pray that one day, every man, regardless of ethnicity, will break free from emotional incarceration so that we can live from our hearts, man, and not our fears. My brothers, black brothers, beautiful kings. It's time to come out of this suffering. When we're together, man, we're powerful. When we can all cry out together, we'll all heal together. And that's all I got for right now. Um, and I'll be praying and um, break free. Shalom.